This past week in Hartford, Connecticut, a 78-year-old man by name of Mr. Torres was a victim of a hit and run. And this hit and run incident was captured on video that is all over the internet now. And it really turns my stomach to watch it. In the video and in this photograph, you can see a man lying motionless in the middle of the street. And in the video, you can see numerous cars and passengers passing by. A few people stand near him, but they do not go to his aid. What has happened to us? It is as if Luke 10 is played all over again in the 21st century. And the chief of police of that city said this, society has lost its moral compass. And I agree, but furthermore, I believe it is much more than that. I believe that we have lost our moral compassion. I believe that in the parable of Luke 10, Jesus is really trying to convey the idea that being a neighbor is more than just living in the same neighborhood. It means being compassionate first and foremost. Remember, it's not about the neighborhood, it's about the neighbor. Being a neighbor and being compassionate are the one and the same. And our hearts have grown cold for one another, especially the stranger. And you know, we find it so much easier to make excuses than to be compassionate. I'm already late. I don't know how I can help. I'm not trained to do this kind of thing. I'll call 911 for them. And in a matter of fact, records show that four people did call 911 after Mr. Torres was hit, minutes, seconds after he was hit. But you know what? Not one of them stopped. Here's another excuse. I can't get involved. It's not my problem. I'm tired of helping. They're not doing anything to help themselves. They didn't help me when I needed help, so why should I help them? And perhaps some of these excuses are very familiar to you. They're familiar to me, and I ha I'm ashamed to admit that I have used some of these excuses at one point or the other. But let's go back to Luke 10, Luke 10, 33, in our scripture where we are told that he, meaning the Samaritan, when he saw him, the man who was beaten, he took pity on him. He took pity on him. Another version, another version translates this verse as, he had compassion on him. And the Greek word for compassion is a word that is rarely used in the New Testament, and it is only used to describe the actions of God, never the actions of human beings. Being a neighbor means being compassionate, but the compassion in this chapter points us to something deeper than human compassion because human compassion, face it, is very superficial. This compassion of the Samaritan points us to divine compassion. And let's just quickly take a closer look at the actions of this Samaritan. He got off his donkey and came to the injured man. Don't laugh. He got off his donkey and came to the injured man, which means he recognized the need. He bandaged up the injured man's wounds, which means he personally involved himself with this stranger. He poured his own oil and wine, which means he gave to a stranger that which was his. He put the injured man on his own donkey. He sacrificed his own comfort. He brought him to an inn and took care of him, which means he took ownership of this stranger. He offered to pay for all the expenses, which means he took accountability and full responsibility for the care and healing of this stranger. This stranger also just happened to be an arch enemy. How about that? Now, now, let's put ourselves in the position of the injured man, okay? That injured man is us. And let's take a look again at the actions of the Samaritan and look at his actions and the actions of God on our behalf. We've been beaten by sin and left to die by the side of the road. God has recognized our need. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. 
God involved himself in our lives and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He involved himself in our lives so much that he became just like us. God gave to us that which was his. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only one and only son to us. God sacrificed his own comfort on our behalf. Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. God heals us. The Son of Man has authority to forgive all sins. Get up, take your mat, go home. And God pays for all our expenses. It is Finish, paid, account cleared. And then Jesus at the end of all this says, go and do like wise. And he just set the bar real high, didn't he? Because he wants us to have the same kind of compassion that is only reserved to divine. He has set the bar for us real high. And for us as believers and for those of you that are seekers, let me tell you, the bar is set real high for compassion to each other and to the stranger. And it scares me that it is so high. But I would not expect anything less from God. And so what are we to do? What is it for us to do? This is part of the spiritual journey. This is what it means to journey, to be in the image of Jesus, to, you know, to be like Christ. This is part of the spiritual journey. It's not going to come overnight. But here is the first thing that you need to do. Here is the first thing that you need to do. We must see ourselves as that man or woman beaten and left for dead by the side of the road. That's where it begins. And if we have the nerve as we are lying there thinking this is it. Open your eyes to see who is stooped over you to help you out, to lift you up, to heal you, to make you whole again. And when we realize who that person is, and when we realize, as we see the nail marks of his hands, the expense that it took to get us up again, it is going to propel us to want his compassion in us. It is a risk. It is not easy. But it is him in us that will propel us to be the neighbor that he has called us to. To be. Who is your neighbor? Who's your neighbor? Do me a favor this afternoon. Take some quiet time with God. Read and reread and read and reread, reread, read, 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 read. Luke 10 again. And every time you read, you say, God, answer for me. Help me see who is my neighbor. Were you moved by this message? Why not share it with friends and family around the world? And if you'd like more information about New Hope Adventist Church, go to lookingforachurch.org.